Today, I'm taking a look at the Hoka Rincon versus the New Balance Beacon 2. Six point five two miles, eight minutes thirty eight seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty nine beats per minute on my run commute this morning, taking the Beacon Two for a run for the first time in a while, and I wanted to do that specifically so that I could compare it to the Hoka Rincon that I ran in yesterday. Uh, before I get into my thoughts comparing these two shoes head to head, though, I do want to go over disclosures. The Rincon is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for it. The Beacon 2, I believe I paid for this one myself. Uh, no one sent this shoe to me. However, in either event, no one's paying me to use either of these shoes or to make this video or any of these videos. And no one's got a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's take a look at these two shoes head to head. Now the use case between these two shoes is slightly different. The Beacon 2 is more of your daily trainer. The Rincon is kind of like a daily trainer plus. And the plus, what I mean by that is a little bit of a faster day shoe. Uh, I like it for my fast long run shoes, a long run day where I've got uh, some speed play in there. That's when I'm gonna be reaching for the Rincon. Although lots of people have been using it for daily training, people have also been using it to run their half marathons and marathons. So uh, in terms of the versatility, Daily Trainer is gonna give you a little bit more of not only your faster days, but also just your everyday and your recovery days. Something like the Rincon I think is not as great for your recovery days, but you can be an everyday shoe, but especially it's gonna be for those faster days when you're trying to log miles and keep the paces fast. Uh, and because of that, the shoes are built a little bit differently. Both of these shoes are incredibly lightweight, uh, but the Rincon, I feel like is slightly lighter. I'm not sure what the numbers are uh, in terms of the actual ounces, but in hand and on foot, the Rincon does feel a lot lighter because I think it's designed a little bit more for speed rather than kind of every day. Uh, what you're also getting in terms of that speed purpose is that the fit in the upper on the Rincon uh, is a little bit tighter, has a little bit more of a race day type of snugness to it. Uh, the material is a little bit thinner as well. On the Beacon 2, uh, it's a lot roomier, plenty of room in the toe box, and the materials are also a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable, uh, a little bit more comfortable on the foot overall. And so I think that also is, again, consistent with their two different use cases. Now, the last thing that I'll talk about in terms of the difference between these two shoes uh, is the amount of cushion. Now, the Rincon is a Hoka shoe and Hoka is known for its cushioning. And I definitely feel that the Rincon is the more cushioned of the two shoes. And that's not to say that the Beacon 2 doesn't have fantastic cushion. The fresh foam that's in here, it's fresh from ground contact. You're running on a lot of just exposed foam. I think it feels absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite foams that I ran on in 2019. I really enjoy running on both of these shoes. And while I would overall say that the Rincon is a little bit more cushioned at its use case, uh, I do think that the cushioning uh, is appropriate for the way that each of these two shoes is kind of intended. In the Beacon 2, I feel a lot more of the cushion in the heel and a little bit less in the forefoot. And that makes a lot of sense for the way that you're supposed to be using the shoe or it's intended to be using the shoe for the most part. In the Rincon, while there's a bunch of stack height in the heel, I don't really notice a lot of that stack height, but I do feel a lot of the cushion in the forefoot. So it feels really great when you're getting up on your toes and you're trying to get a little bit more speed. But overall, in terms of what's the better shoe, I'm not saying that uh, more cushion is necessarily better or a softer feel is necessarily better. In terms of which one's better, I think it's gonna come down to a lot of personal preference. I really like to have a little bit of road feel, feel connected to the surface that I'm running on. And the Beacon 2 really gives me that. It's a little bit thinner in the forefoot. 
But the cushion, the fresh foam ground contact that I mentioned earlier, uh, does a great job of, even though it's thinner and I can feel that it's thinner, it does a great job of absorbing the impact from when my foot is hitting the ground, but it also feels really great that I can keep moving through the gait cycle, get my foot on the ground, push off, and get my foot back off the ground relatively quickly. So I really enjoy that. Overall, in terms of my personal preference, I think the Beacon 2 edges out the Rincon slightly. And the main reason for that is the fit. It's just a more comfortable shoe for me to run in. It's a little bit roomier in the toe box, but these are also two of my favorite shoes from 2019. And so you're not gonna really go wrong with either of them. So which of these two shoes should you get? If you're only gonna get one, I'd say get the Beacon 2 if you don't already have a daily trainer that you love. If you have a daily trainer that you love though in your rotation, uh, then I would say, get this shoe because then you've got your daily trainer that you already love and then you've got the Rincon for those faster days. So it all kind of, the answer always depends on what else do you have in your closet. That's always the way that I like to look at these two shoes. Does everyone need to get both of these shoes? I don't think everyone does. Can you get both of these shoes? Yeah, absolutely. I think they could exist in the same closet and make a bunch of sense to have both of them at the same time. So those are my thoughts on the Rincon versus the Beacon 2. If you have any questions about either of those two shoes or if you had experience in those, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below and keep talking to you guys down there. Before I go, I wanna talk about a new charity runner for this week. This week, it's Robert Lapus, who's gonna be running the Houston Marathon, and he's raising money for the March of Dimes, a cause that is close to his heart because he was a premature baby himself. And so I was happy to donate $70 to Robert's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?